Hi, today's movie is Black Narcissus, the 1946 psychological drama written and directed by the fabulous Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. The film stars Deborah Carr, Kathleen Byron, David Farrar, Sabu and Jean Simmons. In British-occupied India, a group of nuns try to set up a school and clinic on a remote mountaintop palace that was the former harem palace of a local general. But as they struggle to establish themselves, things continue to go wrong and fall apart, and the psychological tensions in the group escalate towards a shattering climax. Black Narcissus is widely regarded as an absolute classic of British cinema. It is an extraordinary and such an unusual film, notable for its unforgettable visual imagery. At the same time, it is a film that might leave you with some very uneasy feelings and some very uncomfortable feelings, almost like you've got a piece of grit stuck in your mind that you just can't get out. The film is distinguished by fantastic performances from Deborah Carr and in particular the extraordinary performance of Kathleen Byron as the very troubled Sister Ruth. Kathleen Byron brings a wild and unpredictable kind of electricity to the role of Sister Ruth and in some ways her performance reminded me of the very unusual performance of Anne Savage in the film Detour. The stunning cinematography of Jack Cardiff and the breathtaking visuals of art director Alfred Jung both won Academy Awards for this movie and it's very easy to see why. The film is just rife with the most staggering visuals and there are matte paintings and process shots in this movie that will absolutely take your breath away. But it's the film's very unusual subject matter that makes it so unique and so thought-provoking. This is a film about people blithely going where they don't belong and where they are not wanted, and people who lack the self-reflection to even be aware of this. As a story about colonialism, it's pretty damning, and the film does feature the racist attitudes of the nuns who describe the local Indian people as primitive and childlike. Yet these nuns who come to save and teach these local primitive people uh, lack the self-awareness even to save themselves from their own inner demons. Black Narcissus' position on colonialism in race is complicated by the use of white actors in brownface, with the exception of Sabu, the fantastic Indian actor, who is very memorable in his role as the little general. Now I feel like a colonial reading of the film is kind of beyond my wheelhouse, um, but I'm sure there are many other uh, film critics and writers out there who have discussed Black Narcissus from those points of view, exploring those complicated and difficult themes. But what I would like to do is talk about some of the other themes and elements in the film that interested me. One of the most interesting features of the movie I found on this viewing was that in many ways it's a story about the failure of boundaries. This is a story in which the outside is always coming in, like in the palace, um, how it's always just being buffeted by winds which just come inside and are blowing everything around all the time. And at the same time, it's, it's a story about the failure of boundaries in that it's about what's inside leaking out. And that happens very much in terms of the emotions and desires of the characters. The other interesting failure of boundaries in the film is the failure of the boundary between the past and the present. And this is very clear in the uh, palace itself, which was a former harem palace and still has all these beautiful sensual drawings of women on the walls which clash very uncomfortably with the constrained values and Christian views of the nuns. In the present. But perhaps the film's most interesting theme is in its emphasis on attitudes around female sexuality. And I think this is one of the film's most interesting and at the same time most troubling areas. The film seems to suggest that celibacy makes women go insane, and this is particularly the case with Sister Ruth. At the same time, Kanchi, the young beautiful Indian girl, is sent to the palace to try and contain her sexuality because her sex positive attitude is seen as a big problem. Now contrast to all this Mr. Dean, the English agent, who lives a life of complete promiscuity in absolute freedom of 
any consequences of any kind. His physical presentation in the film is really interesting too. Uh, if he were a woman being presented this way, walking around in little hot pants, he would be judged as flaunting himself. And effectively, he is flaunting himself to the nuns. He flaunts his body, he flaunts his sexual freedom, and he taunts the nuns about this, while at the same time, he is the one who imprisons Kanchi with them for her sexual freedom. Mr. Dean's physical and sexual freedom is in painful contrast to the nuns' constrained lives and the fact that they have to completely cover their bodies at all times. Female sexuality is a problem that black narcissists can't resolve. There are no happily married women depicted here. There are no examples of any kind of approved or non-problematic female sexuality in the film. We are left to imagine, I think, at the end that Kanchi probably becomes the little general's concubine. I mean, I doubt she'd become his wife because the difference in their station is so great. Even so, the Indian women in the film are presented as having access to a kind of sexual freedom that the white women are simply not culturally allowed to have. And I guess at the crux of the whole film is the idea that if you are a white woman trying to claim this kind of sexual freedom, you will pay for it, and you will pay for it with your life. And I guess this also ties back to Deborah Carr's backstory. As a younger woman in Scotland, she had been romantically involved with a young man that everyone thought she was going to marry. There is an implication that there was a sexual dimension to this relationship, but when the man left without marrying her, she had no choice but to go to the nunnery and become a nun. And clearly she's not happy about this. She's, you know, in the movie she seems very um, depressed and uh, emotionally shut down. But this is seen as her only option. In some ways the attitudes that Black Narcissus takes towards its female characters and their sexuality seem kind of cruel, but at the same time, I think they are very much reflective of attitudes of the time and still some attitudes of the present. There is just so much to enjoy, to absorb, and to appreciate in this movie on so many levels that I think, even if you're just watching it for the visuals, you would get so much out of viewing Black Narcissus. But if you're interested in deeper levels, there is certainly many, many interesting aspects of the film from that point of view too. I've watched it twice in the past week and I'm still pondering it and chewing it over in my mind. There are still things about it which are just gnawing at me. I would highly recommend Black Narcissus if you're in the mood for a stunning and thought-provoking British art film from the 1940s with a stellar cast. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you'll join me next time. I'll see you then. Bye.